the decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. A couple more miles, you'll be cheered up real fine. Have a good place to sleep and some food in your belly. We can afford that. We don't find something in this next town, we're gonna have to start cutting kindling so we can eat. It won't be the first time. That makes it less, not more attractive. Now I'd take a shivering army deserter and be happy for the $50 bounty. Well, we don't have to worry none. We passed two mines, didn't we? And how many prospectors and mining claim signs? No, sir, this is mining country. Isn't all that gold stored up in that town? And every three months the stage comes to haul it away? <laughs> three months of gold dust. If that ain't honey for flies, I don't know what is. They'll be coming from all over, all kinds. Card shops, con men, smiling girls, and for us, hungry guns with a price on their head. <laughs> yes, sir, gonna be just like Christmas morning. You wait and see. Maybe even Obi Thorne. Obi Thorne? Sure, why not? Why not, Mr. $1,000, dead or alive, Obi Thorne? Gonna be just like Christmas turkey, stuffed and gravy with all the trimmings. Sometimes you act just like a kid, a dumb kid. Yeah, you ought to try it sometime, Corey. <laughs> Make the world seem less... Uh... Black? I was gonna say white. <laughs> Good day to you. Name's Gus Haynes. I'm the law in Placer Creek Carsing. That's town over the ridge. Want to ask what your names are? Earl Corey. Jamal David. Tom. What's your business in town? Well, that is where you're heading, ain't it? Yes, it is. As far as our business, we're in the same line of work as you, Sheriff. Matter of fact. Nothing. Well, if Tom ain't made a mistake, you're not wanted by the law. But that don't make you welcome in my town. Not for a couple of days, anyway. You're gonna keep us out? I just said you're not welcome. There's no legal way I can stop you. As far as us being in the same business, you'll do yourselves more harm than good thinking that. I put bounty hunters along with maggot and vulture and anything else that grows fat feeding off carrion. The man said fat. Ha! We hunt down men, break the law. Only difference is if we catch them, we get paid more than you do. Take it easy now. Clear it. You'll have plenty of company. The town's full of your kind. Maybe you'll kill each other off fighting over who gets the biggest cut of carrion. I'm sorry, Jamie. 
just that sweeping up and then things are too complicated for you. There's somebody come along that can do them. More here. are going to eat just fine, but all we got left is enough of beans. I bet when you was master of that big Virginia plantation, you never thought it'd get to this, eating beans one at a time. It's not the only thing I've never thought I'd be doing, partner. Well, why don't you pick yourself out a new one? Looks like you're found the Hunters Convention here. Joey Madsen, Jed Mitchell, and Williams, what's his name? I think I'm going to be bounty hunting all my life, dear. I just joined up with you on a fluke. First chance I get, off I go. You keep saying that. Let me know when the time comes. Get something fit in the safe. Yeah, that's a pretty big safe. Yeah, got a whole lot of gold dust. Looks like the story I heard was true. Uh-oh. What? See you soon. I don't want to sit here. Man, I ain't seen in a few years. Cecil Taylor, out of Wichita. The other must be his partner. So doesn't seem to be very fond of you. I beat him out of Bonnie about three years ago. Didn't set too well with him. Said he'd get even. I take it he didn't? <laughs> if he had, I'd be just the ghostly voice talking to you. That man's specialty is ventilating backs. Well, just sit facing him, that's all. Well, that's almost his words. He eats three onions a day. Claims he cleans out his liver. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. But I heard you was killed in the war. That's what they told oh, me. I came back. They said you were gone. Gone away, everybody. I said. went back. I went back after the peace. Will of hell. Try to see your brother. I reckon he was too busy to mess around old Gideon. But Gideon didn't sigh over that. No, sir. You was my friend, not your brother. <laughs> well, you're a sight for tired eyes, you are. Get the way you dress. <laughs> what you doing with that gun and all? Uh, Jamal David, this is Gideon. Kind of thought it was. Yes, sir, I sure am. Come on, sit down. Let's have a talk. Oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, why not? You must have a minute or two. Oh, it ain't that. Just to sitting down. Wouldn't be proper, myself. I'm not with you. Man, where you been? He's right. That's a lot of nonsense. Come on, well, sit down. Well, maybe for one minute. <laughs> my, 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 but it's something to see you again. As long as I live, your family and Willow Hill, they're going to mean home to me. I was 17 years old when your papa sold me off. That was the sorriest day of my life. Well, I couldn't believe it. I went down there and old Thad. You remember old Thad, don't you? Yeah. Well, he said you were sold. 
I wanted to show you a new coat we just bought. Yeah, we sure had ourselves some time, yeah. didn't we? You remember when uh, old Matthew Henry caught us? Do you know sweet <laughs> How could I ever forget? You <laughs> hollered, run, and we ran. <laughs> remember his shotgun? It was as big as a cannon, yeah. and it made noise like thunder. <laughs> you missed me, though. Didn't miss me. I was picking books out of my backside for two weeks oh, after that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. That's right. Ah, <laughs> oh, those are good times. Innocent times. Where the world's changed. Yeah. Are you all right, Gideon? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Got me a good job. Mr. Sam, he takes nice care of me. But it ain't like the old days. Sure ain't. Would you go back to those old days? I mean, if you could. I don't know. Before freedom, I had me a home and a family. Past years, I've been scuffling around. Sometimes I didn't know was I going to eat to stay alive. But still in all, sir, I'll take freedom. You want to have me wondering for a while. Well, I, let's get me back to work. Say, you and I are going to have a long talk about all the old times and all the old people we knew, eh? Oh, I'd like that, master. Is that you, ma? Buckshot should have hit him in the backside, give him some sense. Now, what kind of a remark was that? Oh, did I say something displeasing, Master Earl? What's the matter with you? You watch out what you're doing. I'm you sorry. Stupid, sir. Stupid. I'm sorry. Well, you're sorry, but that ain't gonna make me any more drier. Well, I'm cleaning it off, sir. Yeah, you do the... Wait a minute. I've seen you before, boy. No, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I've got a good memory for faces, especially ugly ones. Just give them a kick, Hank, and let them go. It ain't worth the fuss. Well, it ain't your boots got all clumsy up, is it? Besides, I know this boy, don't I? Yeah, I know you. Now, you tell me. Where, where do I know you from? Oh, boy, I don't forget I'm faces. Sorry. The man said he was sorry. Oh, please, Master Earl, it's all right. What's it to you? Go on upstairs, Gideon. No trouble, man? You gentlemen don't really want to draw over a saloon swamper, do you? No, I didn't think so. Go on upstairs, Gideon. It's yes. a start on the room. Just like you, Cecil. Partner fast, bounty hunter. Trying. If I was you, I'd lay down on the floor first. So you don't hurt yourself falling. Why don't I uh, buy you gentlemen a drink, huh? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm gonna do with Maggie coming. Uh, bring some drinks for these gentlemen, huh? <laughs> on the house. Sit down. Why don't you gentlemen go back to your tables? We'll bring them to you at your tables. Luck. You know, since I've gone through every one of these, huh? Well, well, what do you want? Mr. Sam told me to fetch you a pitcher of water and a towel. Put them over there on the dresser. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. I haven't come to you the man you took me to be. I don't take you to be anybody, boy, except who you really are. But every time I look at you, it brings me a little bit closer to knowing that I've seen you somewhere before, and I'll bet my life on that. Oh, sir, I remember we has ever met. I didn't say we ever met. It ain't gonna surprise me none at all if I don't find a price here on your woolly head. It sure surprised me. This old black body ain't hardly worth feeding. Any price on me? I'd be fiddling half of the term of everything. I told you to put the... Oh. Boy, I... I... Straight talk. A man was killed today. Knife murdered. He was one of your kind. But that don't matter. It's still a killing. And the only one that's happened here in two years that wasn't out in the open witnessed fair and square. We're not responsible for what happens in your town, Sheriff. 
I ain't talking about who did or didn't do it. But I am saying you're all part to blame. So you hear me out. Up until now, I've been able to control things. But it's gotten out of hand. Be glad to help you resign, Sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> Before anyone else decides this here's a minstrel show, I'll tell you that I didn't get to be 52 by either being soft or slow. Maybe you won't get to be 53. Yeah, <laughs> All of you, shut up. You hear me? Shut up. Let him talk. Else he'll be at it all night. The air's already getting choke foul in here. Mostly onions. For the past six months, this town's become the watering hole for all kinds of strange critters. Most of all, you. Now, I can imagine the tall stories you swallowed that keeps bringing you in. And I got a pretty good idea what you expected to find. So before I run you all out of town... Run us out of town! Let me way. finish. Before I run you all down, I want to set you straight. I want you to go back to where you come from, and on the way, you tell everybody to stay away from this town. There's nothing here for them or you, either side of the law. I'll tell you what I heard, Sheriff, that there's gold here, brought in by miners all around, that there's so much dust in that saloon safe over there, they have to haul it away every three months, that the stage comes here just for that, to meet the U.S. Cavalry outside town. They escort them to the railhead. And they ship it off to Denver or St. Louis or some other bank with a cellar big enough to hold it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like four or five thousand dollars. a lot of money. Now, yeah. Sheriff, I call that honey. And since I'm in the fly catching business, I kind of disagree when you say ain't nothing here for me. Well, I sure hate to disappoint you, boys. But seeing as how your maws forgot to tell you, I will. Santa Claus is long dead and gone. Sure, there's gold, some dust, mostly nuggets, and worth a piece. But nowhere near what it's been blowed up to be. And it's guarded 24 hours a day. Well, what makes you so sure there won't be a try at that gold? Maybe there will. That's my job, not yours. I'm saying there's nothing here for you. You all came to a picnic, but the food ain't showed up. There's no one with a bounty on his head worth your counting inside 60 miles. What about Cal Morris? You got his poster up there. Yeah, we're yeah, I'll explain that. Thanks for the reminder. He was gunned down two weeks ago near the Canadian border. What about him, the half-breed, Otero? The stockade at Fort Bass. You boys hang on like bird dogs. Now, I'm tired of John. Believe me or don't, just be out of my town by morning. And since you'll all be leaving real early, you can pick up your hardware now. You satisfied? No. Sheriff, what about Obi Thong? Thousand dollar bounty. Well, boy, why not? If you've a bent to dreaming, why not dream big? Obi Thorne left Dalenburg three weeks ago, heading this way. Now, that'd put him inside of 60 miles of here. He's had his face glued up all over the territory and into two states. A man smart enough to rob three banks and never be seen? You think he'd risk walking into this town or any town? Unless Obi Thorne can change his face, he don't dare show it around here. Maybe he don't have to show it. Obi don't have to come in himself. All he needs is someone in town working with him. You got anyone particular in mind? Just a thought. Something I dreamed up. Like you said, Sheriff, I got a natural bent for dreaming. Ain't that right, Coley? Oh, yeah. Day or night, night or day. Awake or asleep, he dreams. Isn't that right, Jamal? If you lie and it don't snow in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Get out. Corey. Let you ride with him is your business. But you ought to teach him some manners, if nothing else. That way you're sure to keep him around longer and healthier. But your concern for his health is a bit misplaced, sir. You see, besides dreaming, his other natural bent is staying alive. He does that real good. I'm sure he'd be glad to show you sometime how he does it. Quite a man, that chef. Listen, Corey, I don't need you to stand up for me. I can fight my own fight. 
What's the matter with you today? You're touchier than a lizard with sunburn. First you start picking on old Gideon, and you start calling me Massa Earl like some end man in a riverboat show. It wasn't meant to be funny. I just ain't interested in hearing about him or any of your other used to be dockies. And I'm not responsible for what a man calls me. Oh, is that a fact? He just dreamed it up all by himself one day. Decided that Miser Earl sounded better than Mr. Corey or Earl or any other way a man talks to a man. I'll be in the saloon. Look me up when you feel better. Corey? What about right now like the sheriff said? Do what? Pick nuts and berries from the trees? I ain't made up my mind either. Just explaining to the young lady that I'm financing. This is on the house. Why? It's where I do my hiring. Yeah, nothing fancy. Just a couple days' work. You and your partner. The two dollars a day each. Doing what? I got sixty thousand dollars worth of gold dust over there, and a guard with a brain full of whiskey. Anything happened, he'd more than likely kill himself and half the room. Well, you got your choice of any gunslinger here. Why me? Ain't many ex-officers and plantation owners around as I know of. You come with a high-quality recommendation. Well, I'll talk to my partner. Now, it's just till the stage leaves, 8 a.m. day after tomorrow. Now, let me know as soon as you can. All right. Good. Couldn't even buy you a drink, huh? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I'll do better than that. Bartender? Get in. Thank you. <laughs> it was this way, Master. It hurt me real bad to see you the way you are, remembering what you was. I don't look back. But I hear tell you ain't got to eat. That's what I hear. And I know you're too proud to take without earning. So I told Mr. Sam how lucky he'd be if you was to work for him. Now take the job here, Master. Don't be too proud. I tell him I'd speak to my partner. You best think about your own belly. Now, you listen to old Gideon. That g he's thinking about his, and I can sure tell you that. <laughs> what you know about him? I know I can trust him. You won't be the first white man who's fooling to thinking he had a black friend. I didn't say he was my friend. I said I could trust him. Can't you talk? What you making? Just whittling. I had a real job here once. Is that a fact? They took it away. They gave it to... to somebody. I like to sweep. Make things clean and shiny. But they took it away. That's too bad. You're not like him. You look the same. But you're not like him. I can tell. You talking about old Gideon? Why'd they give him my job when he's bad? What you mean he's bad? Out of real bed to sleep on, too. Why do you say Gideon's bad? Because... What you scared of, son? Things I've seen. He's bad because of the things I've seen. Seen what?
Mr. Thorne. You walk real soft. But I didn't want to wake you up. Yeah, I noticed that. Why don't you shoot? Because I'm stuck with you, boy. Like it or not. Just like you're stuck with me. The difference is you need me. And I don't need you. Not anymore. Not since Stalenberg and everybody in the territory is looking for you. Mr. O.B. Thorne. They know about you, but not me. They don't know we've been working together, but clumsy as you are, they're gonna, sooner or later. Not if we're careful. No, I figure we can go right on working together, just like we've been doing, because you still need me, Gideon. A black man can't own up to having a lot of money. And I need you to help get that money, get into places that I can't get into, like those two banks, or like this saloon here. You know, man with a mop in his hand, he's just part of the furnishings. Nobody's gonna notice him, pay any attention to him, look right through him. I know Gideon's worth. What I don't know is yours. You're what they call a liability, Mr. Thorne. After this job, you on your own. Yeah? Well, after what I just seen, I'm not too sure we're gonna finish this job together. And that's a chance you can't do nothing but take. All right, when do we move? Page comes in tomorrow night. But well, it don't move till the next morning. You got the combination to the safe yet? Oh, I got that the day after I started working there. That was two weeks ago. How long do you expect me to keep hanging around out here in the bush? Till I say it's time. Everything's working out just fine, Mr. Thorne. Them bounty hunters, they all gone. Except three of them. I ain't worried about any one of them. I even got one of them a job. Guarding the gold. Are you crazy? Old Gideon's a long ways from that, Mr. Thorne. Old Gideon, he follows the fox. But Garden, the gold? Don't you fear none. He's an old friend of mine. He don't know yet how much a friend he's gonna be. Well, then I pity him. Because I know how you take care of your friends. You're still full of snake bite, huh? Maybe this will help. What'd you do, sell my horse? No, we took a job. We did, did we? Yeah, take care of eating problems. You gonna tell me what we're supposed to do? I'm gonna guard that safe in the saloon and shifts. Stage comes in tonight, leaves tomorrow morning. Abracadabra, four dollars a piece, thanks to Gideon. Gideon? Yep, it's his idea. I want to talk to you about Gideon. Suppose I was to tell you that I found a witness to the killing of that bounty hunter. That this witness says that Gideon done it. <laughs> I'd say that witness was plumb local and half blind to boot. I believe him. Oh, sure, you'd believe anything about somebody you don't like. I want to tell you something. I've known Gideon all my life, and I consider him a friend. People change, Corey. Just to show his times change. You know what's bothering you, boy? You just don't like to see Gideon because he reminds you of what you used to be, and you don't like that. I was never like him, inside or out. Well, if you were or you weren't, it's no concern of mine. As far as you and that witness is concerned, I don't care what you think about Gideon. If you make me choose between somebody I know since I was a kid, somebody who... Somebody who what? Go on. Let's go arrange those shifts. You got the money, let's go earn it. Hold it. Take the money back, Corey. Your job interests me just about as much as you do right now. And that's nothing. Come on. Be 
ain't nothing to be afraid of. Just tell him what you told me. What's this all about? You'll hear it in a minute. I want you to hear it from him. He ain't gonna hurt you. Nobody will. Just tell the truth. Tell him what you saw. You got something you want to tell me, Jamie? Come on. All right, then you tell me. He was looking through the window when that bounty on a hand got knife killed. Gideon did it. Gideon did it. You've been took in, boy. He witnessed it. That's all he does is witness on Gideon. This fella comes in here every other day with a new story. Gideon did this. Gideon did that. Why, he's got him doing everything bad down to kicking the saloon cat. Look at him. Why do you think he's too scared to open his mouth? Gideon took his job away, and the poor critter can't abide it. Now, I don't call what he says lying. He sees things like a child. Is that true, Jamie? Did you make it up? Sure he did. Did you? Now, this is the last time, Jamie. You understand? No more. Nobody cares no more. All right, come on. Get out. Get him a job somewhere. As for you, what are you doing here anyway? I told you to clear out by this morning. Well, we couldn't leave town, Sheriff. Not just yet. We got jobs. You got what? Simmer down, Gus. You'll split a gut. Well, you might have asked me first. Sam, I don't know what's got into you. They're bounty hunters. Well, it's done, and that's the way it stands. I want to congratulate you, then. You as good as hired the fox to take care of the chicken coop. You. You different than the others? You were all told to leave town. Not till I find out. Maybe you don't care, but I do. Hank was my partner and my friend. You just can't shove him in some hole like he never lived. I'm not leaving until I find out who killed him. You got 24 hours. Did you, sir? Show with brothers. All right, cousin. -y. Though you ain't friendly enough to be kin of any kind. I suppose I ought to thank you for the job. I didn't do it for you. I did it for a friend of mine. You got a good heart. Too good to be working in a saloon. Do you want me to be mayor? You could be, I expect, if they'd let you. You got rid of that humble as little green peas face you're showing all the time. We all do what we has to, cousin, to get along. Ain't everybody can tie on a big gun and ride with quality white folk. All right, boy. Evening, sir. So is a mighty fine evening. I just want you to tell me again. I just want you to tell me again, boy, how you found my partner from the beginning. I got my chores to do. I'm sorry, sir, but I really got to get back to work. Go on, tell him. I never did hear what happened, not from you. Well, I don't know what happened. All I know is what I seen when I got to the room. He invited you up there, did he? I was doing the rooms like Mr. Sam told me to. I ain't let you in? No, I told you. The door was open. I knocked. I knocked again. No answer. So I pushed against the door. It squeaked open. He was lying there, on the bed. A knife stuck clear to his heart. Lord, I'd like to pass down. But who? I just... 
just can't understand who. What's the matter with you? Looking so scowly. You act like you don't believe me. Maybe I don't. But like you said, you ain't too friendly, cousin. Evening, my sir. You coming on the ship? That's right. How's everything? Everything's fine. Just fine. Couldn't be better. Good. <laughs> Friend Cecil's trying to drown his sorrows. He's been sitting there for quite a while, going over the killing of his partner in his head. Something's bothering him about the way it happened. Yeah. Well, I'll see you in about four hours. Go into the room? Yeah. Go we'll walk around. Get me some air. Excuse me, sir. What do you want? Well, I couldn't talk before. But there's more about your partner. The way he got killed. Don't you know something? Spin it out. You know something about them, too? You're gonna get me killed. I can tell you, but I can't talk here. I gotta meet you. Name it. Finish my chores. I'm making about an hour at the blacksmith's. I tell you then, at the blacksmith's. What are you doing with that gun? Every now and then I got cause to use it, sir. All right. Let's hear what you got to say. You want to know how your partner got killed? you and you killed him for it. Man can't be too careful who he fools with. Bound there, Hunter. That's my business, ain't it? Not after I ask you, boy. Check his gun. I went for a ride. What's going on? Can you prove it? Sure, ask my horse. Full load? Ain't been fired. Nothing says it had to be that one. Let's go. Hey, wait a minute. If you want it by the book, I'm taking you in for the murder of a man named Cecil Taylor. Bring you some food. Fixed it myself. You might fool them, but you don't fool me. Got to be you kill those two men. You and me just ain't the same, bounty man. You strut around with that gun on your hip, trying to prove you as much man as they is. Me? I ain't got nothing to prove. Then what you after? Money, cousin. 
plain old money. That's the only way black don't have to prove nothing to white. Money makes me as good as any man. Enough money makes me better. And one day, I may even have enough to be best. You're going after that safe, you're going to have to get past Corey. You mean Master Earl? I know getting him to take that job would work out. And you being in here. Lord, that's just cream on top of the can. <laughs> Ooh, enjoy your food, brother. Got to bed. Oh. Is it true that it was Cecil Taylor was gunned down? It's what they told me. <sighs> First Hank and then his partner. I wonder who'd want them dead. Well, I. What? The sheriff. He thinks your partner done it. What? Yes, yeah, sir. He got him locked up. I just bring him some food. Let's go wake up Sam. You don't have to do that if you're just going to the jail. Well, I can't leave this. Well, I can watch things for you. You ain't gonna be gone long. Now, ain't nothing gonna happen, Master Earl. Old Gideon's a good old watchdog. You ought to know that. Yeah. Thanks. Cecil Taylor. You think I did it? Well, there was no love lost between you two. And his partner. I killed Hank, too. I was with you when that one happened. Corey, you don't want to see the truth. And you know the truth. Gideon killed them both. Forget about him. He told me he did it. All right. Taylor said black boy and died. If I didn't, then who? What you doing here? That safe ain't guarding itself. Two bounty hunters. Why would anybody want to kill them? Greed, maybe. Or maybe your partner wanted to keep all that reward money for himself. If he done it, I mean. What reward money? For Obi Thorne. What do you know about Obi Thorne? Well, they all talking about him, ain't they? You mean about how he's around here someplace? I don't know, Master. I don't know. What is the matter with you? Did old Gideon done something? You act like you're mad at him. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? I'm in. Gideon, you're hiding something.
So Jamal was right. What'd you expect me to do? What a lot of others have done. Work for Massa Sam for a dollar a week? That ain't no better than what I left. And all that about Will Hill, you're just greasing me, huh? No. What I spoke was the truth. I do remember. But that was a long time ago. We was in a make-believe world. Ain't none of that no more. Not for you. Not for me. Not for nobody. You want to know what freedom really meant? It meant every man for himself. And that's what I've been living. I was put in this jungle with you white folks. And I learned your code. To live as fast as anybody else. You've got that old twist. Don't move. You hear? Just don't you move. I, I tell you, I tell you, he's, he's gonna kill him. He's bad. Jamie, I don't want any more of your stories. Now go on, get out. But listen to him. For God's sakes, man, listen to what he's saying. Get in. Don't move. Don't make me do something I don't want to do. Because sure as old Gideon loved you once, I'd like to cut you down if you move. I'm riding out tonight. And I'm riding out alone. Old Gideon ain't going nowhere alone. Drop it, boy. Or you'll die right there. Still that deep. I'll tell you, but you won't know. Being free is something you got to learn when you never had it before. It's like having a new heart beating inside you. Strong, but like nothing you ever knew. You have to learn how to not be scared of it or to fight it. Other times, being free is it just makes you remember the old days, how it was, hard and bitter. Then you feel tomorrow slipping away, and you grab for it scared. But worst of all is when I meet a man like Joe Gideon. Because then, don't you see, it's like freedom never happened. That's important. What? That you asked. For the first time, you asked. You talk too much, boy. Yes, sir, Captain. Like you. Just like you. 